Gotcha. Hello everyone, and welcome to my breakdown of SSH's speedrun against Stygian Zenogre in the arena using the Rajang bow. The run is completed in 2 minutes and 16 seconds, and this is currently the world record for any weapon against Stygian Zenogre, and of course that includes the fastest speedrun using the bow. Before I begin the breakdown of his speedrun, I want to ask you guys to go over to his channel, say hello for me, and leave a subscribe. SSH is a friend of mine from the past back in the base game. Both of our channels were a lot smaller back then, and we were just having some fun. I, You know, he was in a uh, top 5 speedrun of Kov Tarot, that's where I first met him, and here we are today in the future, and once again we're doing some content together. So hello SSH, if you're watching this, thanks for providing us with amazing gameplay footage of the bow. You are a bow god, and I want everyone to know about it. Alright, let's go ahead and start unpacking this world record setting speedrun. The first thing I notice is that he does not have a demon drug or demon powder. He only eats a might seed and then after he's done with the little rope lift, he has a, a dash juice. And basically, this, the reason for this I'm guessing is because the additional damage provided by these buffs is not worth it because of the time cost of having to stand around eating. All right, and now he's climbing into the arena. You'll notice that he has his evasion mantle already ready to go, and he's picking up a stone, and the stone's going to be important for causing a flinch shot into the wall with the Zenogre. He's jumping down. He just put on his evade mantle while falling, so he's gotten a, kind of a job done that would have normally cost time, but he's saving time by getting it done midair. And then he shoots a pebble at the ground because he wants Zenogre to be distracted while he grabs onto Zenogre's head, and he's going to get three clutch claw attacks off. Let's explain why he's using three of these claw attacks. Okay, so he uses three, he turns the Nogre into the wall, and then he flint shots. Why is he doing that? What's the reasoning behind that? Well, this is something not everyone knows. So there are weapons where, in order to soften a monster's hide, you need to, as you know, get two weapon attacks off when you clutch claw the monster, right? You clutch claw the monster, you use a weapon attack, and then when you've done that twice, the monster's face or body gets softened. Well, there's also a rule where if you use three claw attacks, this is equivalent to one weapon attack. So when you grab a monster, rather than using your weapon attack, you can use three claw attacks. That's what SSH has just done. So now he's going to go ahead and grab onto the monster's head. And he's using one weapon attack. And so because he's used three claw attacks and one weapon attack on the head, he's caused a softened hide, which is really important for damage output because, as you know, uh, weakness exploit doesn't proc to 50% until you're attacking a softened body party. It only goes to 30. Alright, so Zenogre's face is now softened. He just put on the power coatings. He's setting down a pitfall trap right under the rocks. What do you think he's doing that for? And now it's time for him to get damage in on his Anogre. He's going to get those normal shots. He's going to get those power shots. And he's doing that... Uh, hold on, let's pause for a moment. One of the things he's doing is when the bow's charged up, he's going to be using the dash dance to keep the bow charged up. And then he'll... Typically, he'll use a normal shot followed by a spread shot after each dash dance. But sometimes he'll break that pattern depending on whether or not... Uh, Zenogre's in a favorable position. So he's going to get as much of his bow damage in as he can. Let's continue. Zenogre's just kind of standing around, charging up. <laughs> We're, he's dealing so much. 75 per shot. Oh my god. And now look at this. So he just grabbed onto Zenogre's face, and I think the reason he did that is because it was actually faster for him to grab Zenogre's face than it would have been for him to actually sheath his weapon. Isn't that wild? Uh, so he could have sheathed the bow and then moved into the impact mantle, but instead he clutch clawed Zenogre's face and then just jumped back off and put the impact mantle on at that point. So I found that really interesting. <laughs> the ways you try to shave a few seconds or milliseconds off of your run. getting the exhaust. Oh, that was a flinch. I'm sorry. You'll notice the monster just kind of stays crowd controlled the whole time. Impact Mantle is giving him the KO, of course. He's just going all out on the damage output. Really great damage. Again, dash dance, normal shot, spread shot. He's inside of the pitfall trap now. Let's see what he does next. So he's going to get all of his shots in. I think he accidentally shot the arm there. <laughs> Which makes you wonder, could the run be like even a few milliseconds shorter? Oh my gosh, so he is exhausted. He's going to go ahead and drop the boulder. I don't know if that's technically exhaustion. It's more like 
drooling, I, I suppose we should call it drooling, it's that new animation that the developers gave us in order to use the clutch claw more easily. Alright, he's continuing on with this heavy damage on Zenogre's head. He still has the softened part, luckily. There you go, there's another KO right away, too. Very easy. Perfect crowd control on the monster. You notice that the monster really never gets a chance to do anything at all. He's just juggled from beginning to end. So he goes into the trap and then into the trank bombs, and the fight is over. 2 minutes and 16 seconds. Very impressive. Okay, so and now we'll move on to talking a little bit about his build. He's wearing the Raijang Helmet Beta, Kirin Jacket Alpha, Kirin Long Arms Beta, right, so Kirin Chest and Arms, Golden Obi Beta, and the Garuga Greaves Beta, along with the Challenger Charm Level 4. So what's so interesting about this build is that he did not build true crit element, which is what we normally would expect for a bow, but he's actually gone more toward the physical damage side of things rather than the true crit element side of things. And this is really, it's kind of shocking to me because I'm so used to always seeing crit element or true crit element. So yeah, I, I think that, and this is probably especially working for the Raging Bow in particular, I suppose, because we know that the Raging Bow is a high raw damage bow. And this is so interesting because it shows you that you know, we were hoping for more weapon diversity than what we had in base game, and it looks like we got it. I mean, this is a world record with a raw damage setup, even though you're, yes, of course, you're also dealing some thunder damage, you don't have true crit element, so the, the focus is actually more on the raw damage side. Okay, so once again, I want to thank SSH for providing the speedrun, letting me break it down. You know, if you're a speedrunner and you would like for me to do the same thing for you, feel free to reach out to me. And for everyone watching, again, please hit the link in the description or in the comment section that leads over to his channel and give him a subscribe for me. Do it out of the goodness of your heart and also because you want to see amazing bow speedruns.